Welcome to Connect to Joy. Your host, Carol Deshane, is an intuitive spiritual guide for practical matters and Marconic multidimensional energy practitioner. Her quest is to help you realize new possibilities, discover and release what holds you back, and enable you to manifest an inspired life filled with joy. Join us on this journey of transformation. Now, here's your host, Carol Deshane. Hello, beautiful spirits. Welcome to the show. I'm Carol Deshane, and my passion in life is to help you find your joy, to release what holds you back, and assist you to quantum leap your journey of self-discovery. I'm an intuitive, certified in life and business coaching, and a multidimensional energy light worker. So if you're ready to start creating that life you've always dreamed of, that you deserve, let's have some fun and let's get started right now. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to do something slightly different because I want to talk about life after divorce. Divorce can be so tough to go through, whether you have an impossible one where you have kids and people are fighting and screaming and there's custody battles, or whether people think you have a simple one because you're simply pulling apart from each other. Maybe your assets aren't that intertwined. Still an emotional war almost with yourself, with the other person sometimes. Just to be able to get to the other side and feel healthy can be so difficult for people. So I want to share a little bit about my journey, and I want to be able to be there for you to help you realize that you aren't alone if you're in the middle of this. Or maybe if you've already gone through it, you'll listen back and go, oh yeah. And then if there are extra things that you want to help people with, when you hear this, please add it to the comments. I want everyone to get a multitude of ideas on how to move through and get to the other side of a divorce. So first off, make sure that you realize going into it, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tough thing. Whether you're the one that decides, I'm not here with this person anymore. If you decide that the only way that that person is going to be the right person for you is to change 100%, then you might realize that that's not going to happen. First off, people have a hard time changing that much. Second off, when you ask somebody to change who they are at death, even if they do it, they aren't going to necessarily be a happy camper. They need to be able to be true to themselves, and they have to be the one to really make those decisions if there are changes needed. Whether you decide to go and try to make it work, so you go to a counselor and you discuss each way that you're talking, how you're dealing with each other. Sometimes we need that third party. And sometimes we just know it's not working. It's not going to happen. You have to make that decision for yourself. And that can be really hard. So you have someone that you can talk to, whether it's a close friend, tell them in advance, I'm having some issues. I need to talk to someone. Will you be there for me and hold you know, the secrets in until it's time to let them go? I need someone here for me. If they're a good friend, they'll do it. But perhaps you need a therapist or you need a life coach or someone else to talk through things with. Realize that like I didn't want to actually take that step and talk because I knew it was going to devastate the person I was married to. I knew I didn't want to do it. And I put it off. I kept thinking, well, maybe things will change. But when I did realize, oh, no, you'd have to change at depth. That's just not fair to that person. That's when I decided it was time to take those steps. But I have to tell you, it was not easy. Even though I was the one that decided, we ended up staying in the same place. And that may happen to you where you have to live together and deal with it until it's a proper time to be able to split households whether you have children, which makes it much more difficult, or whether you don't, which was my case. You have to look at it and say, who's going where? What's going to happen? And that's just the practicality of it. It's not even the emotional burden that shows up, and that's huge. Sometimes you feel abandoned. If you're the one that's being told, I don't want you anymore. You feel unloved. You can go through so much grief because it's the end of a relationship. The same grief you would go through as if something was dying because the relationship did die. It's kind of like there's you, there's me, and then there's us. And us is what dies. Now, I don't want you to think 
that I am a therapist or I'm a marriage and family counselor because I'm not. But I know, having gone through it and having been a coach for people who have, that there is only so many different ways that people think when they're going through these things. And guilt is one of those emotions that just gets up there for us. Guilt of being the one that you ask the person for the divorce. Guilt at putting through so much pain that person that maybe you told them, I just can't be married to you anymore. And they lost it. They cried. They 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 felt huge amount of pain. And if you ever loved them, you may not necessarily feel whew, relief. At that moment, you're going to feel their pain too, because it'll be your pain. Because you may have already kind of said goodbye to the us, if you're the one that's in not in charge, but you're the one making the decision saying, I can't be married to you anymore. Even if you've taken that time and been aware that the us isn't going to be around anymore, you're still going to have trouble letting it go without pain. There's going to be pain, but you have to be okay with that. You have to decide, okay, I'm going to let go of this in order to make it better on the other end. Sometimes people find that just saying, I want a divorce, makes the other person wake up and say, wait a minute, okay, what can we do to work this out? And maybe you can. Depends on how far gone the relationship is. If the person's someone who drinks or has a drug problem, they may turn around. They may not. So you just have to make up your mind, how are you with all of this? How do you let go of the fear you may have of moving forward if you're the other person? Oh my God, maybe you haven't worked for years and you're in a marriage and they asked for a divorce. What do you do? Do you get out there and say, okay, I can do this? Or are you beaten down because someone asked you for a divorce when you thought everything maybe was fine or at least good enough? If you were afraid that someone would ask you for a divorce because you knew things were going well, maybe you were hiding that information to yourself. So what do you do? Something I did was to work with a life coach. It's not for everyone, but it really helped me. And I had never, I wasn't a life coach then. I didn't think about it, but somehow I read this book, How to Be Ridiculously Happy. Somebody gave it to me right as I was going, after I already talked to my then husband. And I thought, wow, I want to be ridiculously happy. How wonderful is that phrase? I want this for myself. So I read the book. I bookmarked a lot. I highlighted it a lot as you do with anything that comes to you, whether you have a book or maybe a podcast or a show that you see on TV or the movies where you go, oh my God, I needed this. For me, it was this book. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if this author is, she says she's a life coach. I wonder if she's taking clients. So I went ahead and I actually emailed her as her email was on the book. And I went, wow, she'll take me as a client. I had never dealt with a life coach before. And so all I did was just cry and sob and pour everything out. But every time we worked on tapping the EFT technique, and it worked for me at the time amazingly well on releasing all of those emotions that I needed to get through, those stages of of grief for that relationship. Because even though I didn't have the abandonment issues because I wasn't the one being abandoned, I had the guilt. I had the feeling of failure because the marriage wasn't going through. And I can see how much bigger all of these emotions would be if the kids were involved. If people had kids, what you go through is amazing to me, how you can even deal with it. And if this person is the love of your life, obviously you didn't quite make it through where you're not necessarily the love of theirs. At least it seems like it when you're asked for a divorce, right? Because you're going, well, wait, what happened? I thought everything was okay. And then it's really a big shock. Sometimes we ignore the signs. We ignore the feelings that, oh, there's another person in their life. Oh, they're working really late. Hmm, something doesn't feel right. The relationship feels different. It's shifting. Is that good or is there a problem? We might ignore those signs because we don't want to see it. Looking back, After a divorce, you realize a lot of times, oops, okay, I missed those signs. So the next time when you're in a relationship and those signs show up, you can pay a little more attention. I know that helped me a huge amount to do that. But then you can't carry that past with you, can you, right? You have to think, you know, what am I going to do? 
that feeling that someone is going to not be who I thought they were, who they're not going to be there for me, or they're going to tell me they don't love me after they said they did, whatever it may be, that's a worry and a fear that you carry with you. If you end up in a new relationship and everything's going great for you, that other person might have that issue where they're going, I don't know, here I am. And they may not even realize what it is, but subconsciously they're carrying all that baggage with them. They have those feelings of, I I have to leave before they leave me. And that really can screw with you because you think I've healed, I'm in the right path. Then all of a sudden there's this person in front of you who doesn't. And they make you think and wonder, did I heal myself? Do I have more to go? Because they may have their issues and you've attracted them to you. So if you're like me, you think I attracted something to me. What's my lesson in this? Because I don't just want to go through this over and over again. It seems like when I don't take a moment and go, what's my lesson? What do I need to learn? Then I go ahead and say, "Uh, if I don't learn it, then it repeats in some way. When I am going, oh, I get it. Wait, this is what I'm supposed to learn. Then I don't get the repetitive issues. I'm not saying for sure that you're going to end up with someone that you're dating all of a sudden coming in with all these issues. But people are people. We drag all of our past with us until we release it or learn our lessons. So don't be surprised if someone that you are dating after divorce seems to reflect some of the things we haven't healed yet. Law of attraction says, oh, I'm afraid of something. That's what I'm going to attract is what I'm afraid of. You don't have to attract it You just need to be aware of how you're feeling and then go, oh, wait a minute, I don't want that. So let's find a way to heal it and shift it so I don't attract what I don't want. Another thing we have issues with after a divorce, very real thing, seems like real, is finances. What do you do? If you feel like you have been drained after a divorce, whether you don't have a job and you need one, whether the other person took a lot of your savings because it's a community property state and you've been married long enough, whether you have to pay alimony, child support, or whatever it may be, everybody's finances are going to look a little different after a divorce. If you haven't decided if you want to go through a divorce yet, think about that. Think about what your life is going to look like, not only without that other person, but how is your finances going to look? And you don't want to stay in a relationship because of finances. But you might stay maybe an extra few months to get your act in order to figure out what you want because you want to be happy. And that's why you're leaving the person. You want freedom, maybe. What is the purpose of this divorce? Why do you want it? Make sure that you know what you want. You can't just not want what you have. What do you want? Look at what the future is that you want. Do you want someone who's more loving, someone who's more giving, someone who loves you the way you are rather than maybe always wants to make you different, make you over? Do you want someone who maybe you want someone who can support you because you don't want to work? Or maybe you're working and you're making a lot of money and you're going, hey, I don't want the other person to care how much I'm making. Knowing that we can, obviously money is important enough because you want to have the life you want, but you shouldn't really worry so much about finances. But if that's the case, you need to take the time ahead of time and think about what you do want. How do you want your finances to look when you go through the divorce? When you're on the other side of the divorce, you know it's going to be different. So then the question is, what do you want to do? I know you can get another job. You can look at where you're living. That's going to change as well. Life after divorce is going to impact you in your emotions. It's going to impact in your finances. It's going to impact, especially if you have children and whether you want to continue connecting to your ex, right? Because you know you're going to have to see them again if you have kids somehow, if you want to see your children or they want to see them if they're with you. How is that life after divorce going to look for you? And how do you get from here to there if you're right at the beginning? Find someone to help you get through the emotional stages. You can talk to a financial planner to get you through the financial part of the stage if that's something that is big for you. Maybe you don't have that much money, so it doesn't really matter. You're both going to be in bad shape afterwards. Or maybe you haven't worked for a long time and that's going to make a difference. 
Getting help is huge. You can get it from so many different people, from family, from friends. You can get it, like I say, maybe from a life coach or a therapist, from a minister. Anytime you have issues for anything, you can go there. But especially when you need to reach out when you're hurting. Don't necessarily reach out to your Facebook friends because most of those people are not truly your friends. They're not the ones you want to tell every deep, dark secret to on how you're feeling, to put yourself out there in the world because you're going to get shot down. You're going to have people say mean things to you. And that's really not a safe place. It's a place to be out there and saying and sharing maybe the good stuff. And once in a while, some of the strange things that happen to us are interesting. But you don't want to say, everything about how you're feeling with people that don't really care that much. We're amazing how we do that nowadays. We put out there and say, this is how I feel. And the whole world goes, what? And if there's always going to be someone who disagrees with you on your opinion, on whatever. So protect yourself when you're going through this. Take those people that love you, will support you and talk to them. Let them help you through it. And take the time to nurture yourself as you go through those grieving periods for us, for the us that may no longer be there. Nurture yourself and allow the other person to be who they are away from you. But love yourself. Give to yourself the time you need to get through it. You may not start another relationship for years, or you might jump right into another one. But do it because you're ready. Because it's time for you to do it. And it may be three days later because you've been separated in your head for a year or two. And other people may not like that. They may think, oh, that's not good. And they may judge you. Be ready to be able to live with yourself. You're the one that you need to be able to live with. You're the one that deserves more than what you have if it's not what you want when you're in a relationship. Sometimes we need to not only pick up the pieces, but also find a new direction. I know I did that. I was at an age where I went, wait, if I'm not married, that's okay. I'm used to being single. I was single before. I can do it again. But I want more in my life. I don't just want to go back to what I was, what I did. I want more. And my more ended up going to a number of different schools for different things. I did some intuitive training. I did some, which I didn't even know you could do at the time. I did some work on life coaching. I got certified for that. I also went and did some energy work training, and it was so amazing to see all these different types of things come together to make a practice. And then, of course, the speaking, taking Toastmasters, having acted, motivational speaking is something I love to do, as you can probably tell. It's something that you can do for yourself. Find the new direction, whether it's one class Or it's something like mine, which led me to my life purpose. You need to decide where you go from there. Once the divorce is final, on the day it's final, you're going to feel either relief or sadness or maybe even bereft. You could feel all three of those things or more all at the same time. When you get there, what do you want? Where do you want to go from there? Because your life can begin anew. Your life can get so much better. Your life can be what you want. Take that power. Empower yourself. Don't play the victim when you go through the divorce. It may feel like that for a while. Remember that you are worth it. You can do whatever you want. You just have to decide what it is that will bring you joy or peace or whatever it may be in order to get you through to the other side. Divorce can be absolutely exhausting. It can be excruciating. It can be a war. It can be a financial burden or ruin. It can be some really bad things. It can be nasty, but it doesn't have to be. If it is, and you can't find a way to get out of that part of it, realize that when you're complete the divorce and the legal stuff, you can find your own peace again. You have to do whatever you have to do to get there, though. You may need, like I said, that therapist, or maybe you need to go somewhere where you can just scream because that's what you need to do to let out all of the pain and the anger and the angst and all the stuff you've been carrying. But literally, if you can give yourself the love, the attention that you need to be able to heal, whether you take a meditation class, 
or you go on a yoga retreat or whatever you may do, or even just take a horseback riding. Do whatever it is that will bring you sustenance. It will bring you love back to yourself that you may have lost when you're going through the divorce. Like I said, divorce can be scary and mean and nasty and all those other things. But how you get through it, you can raise up your vibration to come from a better place. I know I tried to do that with mine. I tried not to be mean or rude or horrible. It was my idea. I didn't want to hurt him more than I already had. So that was where I came from. And it felt like even though it was difficult and it was emotional, that it was, I don't want to say easier because God, it didn't feel easy at the time. But I saw what other people had gone through and how the nasties had happened. And I felt like I found a way to shift enough so that I didn't react in a really sad way to really make it even more difficult. What do you want when you go through this? What are you looking for? Don't just go into a pit of despair forever. Find your way through. Get help. Find the love of yourself again. And give yourself that peace of mind that goes, okay, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Where do I go from here? If you need help, reach out. I'm around. You can contact me through my website. Other life coaches are around. Ministers, priests, rabbis, all these people, brother, sister, parents, whoever it is you feel supports you the most. Talk to somebody. Wherever you are in your timeline of the divorce, You may feel like you're ripping somebody down constantly and maybe they start avoiding you if you talk for years after it. I've had friends go through it and I try to distract them from their really bad place that they got stuck in. You may find your friends do that for you. If you get stuck and someone's trying to joke around, don't take it in a bad way. They're trying to say, hey, there's another way to think. Let me help you. Let me distract you a little bit. Let me lift you up while you're feeling down. You may not be ready for it yet, but know that they have more than likely best feelings at heart for you, trying to make you release whatever it is you need to, to move forward. Allow yourself to heal. Realize you don't have to push yourself for any kind of time, but don't let yourself stay there forever. You deserve more than that. You deserve a happy life. Until next week. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you love the show, make sure you rate, review, and share this podcast and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Connect with me on Facebook or by email with questions and comments, ideas for future episodes, or if you would like to be a guest, give me a shout out and I'll send you an application. Until next week, remember, you are already enough to have that joyful, limitless life that you desire. Thank you for listening to Connect to Joy. If you love the show, make sure you rate, review, and share this podcast. And subscribe so you never miss an episode. Contact the host, Carol DeShane, with questions and comments, ideas for future episodes, or if you would like to become a guest. And remember, transformation is a journey and not an end destination. So be kind to yourself, because you are already enough to have the joyful, limitless life that you desire.